Okay, so this video is about multi-terrain select. This video will cover the five things you need to know about multi-terrain select. It'll also cover the three things you need to know about A-Track so that you don't use A-Track when you should be using multi-terrain select. This video incorporates essentially in its entirety our A-Track video. And we've done that because the A-Track video was marketed as only an A-Track video, but it contains a comprehensive MTS review. And the reason it does is you need to know both systems to know when to use one and not the other. If you have watched our video on A-Track, you don't really need to watch this video. The reason we're redoing the video like this is to allow people that are actually just searching for MTS information to find the content. Everything in the video is time indexed, so you can jump back and forth to the information you're interested in. So with that introduction, we will start the video at the beginning, which first starts talking a little bit about wheel spin, then goes to A-Track, and then goes to multi-terrain select. Thanks, guys. Have you ever been in a situation like this and then looked up at the overhead console in your Forerunner or Tacoma and looked at all the selectors, knobs, and switches and wondered, which one of these should I use to get myself out of this situation? This video will help you decide exactly that. In other words, which of those buttons and knobs to use. Do you use A-Track or do you use one of the multi-train select features? You are always going to have some loss of traction and tire spinning like you see in these video clips. But the choice between A-Track and Multi-Train Select is not always that obvious. One of these systems actually is designed to stop wheel spin. The other is designed to actually allow and regulate the amount of wheel spin. One of these systems will take your throttle control away. It's designed to regulate wheel spin by adjusting throttle performance in addition to brake pressure. Each have different speed limiters at which the features stop working. Some work in four-wheel drive high, and others work only in four-wheel drive low. So let's get into this. We will start with A-Track. And that brings us back to this scene with the tire up in the air just spinning. This is the classic cross-axle situation where you have one tire on each axle without traction. Have you ever wondered why a tire just spins like that and the other one just sits? Well, what happens is on an open differential, each tire gets the same amount of torque. And that's important. It's the same amount of torque. So under this system, it means that the tire with the least resistance will set the maximum amount of torque that either tire can get. So if you have one tire up in the air just spinning or one tire on ice just spinning, it has very little resistance. Let's, let's theoretically say it takes 25 foot-pounds of torque to spin a tire in the air. That means that the other tire on the ground that has great traction and a lot of weight on it can only get 25 foot-pounds of torque. And that's just not enough to move the vehicle. So what A-Track does, it's a system that detects wheel spin and it automatically applies brakes to the tire with no traction. That puts a lot of resistance on that tire, allowing the axle to send power over to the tire that actually has traction. Okay, with that in mind, Steve engages a track here, and you can see the tire kind of spin, stop, spin, stop, spin, stop. That's the brakes pulsating. It allows traction to go to the other tire, and the vehicle pulls out of the obstacle. Okay, we also set up a test over at this obstacle, and we ran through this with open differentials and tried it with A-Track. Here I have open differentials. I tried A-Track, which did not pull me out of it, and then I actually engaged my front and rear locker, and here's what happened. The dual lockers pulled me right out of it without any problem, and I was pretty happy with their performance, but what we did find is depending on the line we took and how aggressive we were with either momentum or acceleration under a track we were able to get through it here's steve approaching it this is just four-wheel drive we will engage a track if it's needed
All right, hay track. All right, while we show a couple of our runs through this, there are three things that you should know about a track. The first has to do with acceleration. So this ends up to be a little bit counterintuitive because our gut reaction when you lose traction is to decelerate or take your foot off the accelerator and back off. But a track needs power to do its thing. The engine has to be pushing power to the wheels so you get the wheel spin so that the system applies the brakes. And you need, in some cases, more and more wheel spin, more and more acceleration to generate enough brake pressure to in turn generate enough uh, torque to the tire that you need to get through the situation. Now bear in mind, this does not mean stomp on the accelerator. This all takes place at, at very low speed so it's a gradual slow application of throttle until the vehicle gets just enough to get it out of the obstacle and that gets us to speed a track only works in four-wheel drive low and so that by definition means it only works at low speeds the exact speed limiter I have not been able to locate, but I know that I've seen references that suggest that at about five miles an hour, a track features will no longer work. This makes sense because using multi-terrain select as a point of reference, we know for certainty that if you exceed seven miles an hour in four wheel drive low, none of the multi-terrain select features will work. That's in the factory manual. Multi-terrain select is intended for faster speeds in a track so it follows that a track would have a speed limiter less than seven miles an hour we also know that if the rear locker is active a track will not work in the front if the vehicle speed exceeds four miles an hour that's also in the manual so this this speed of about five miles an hour seems to be an appropriate reference for the speed limiter of a track so the take home message on that is that a track is a feature that works at very low speeds. This makes sense since it's a more robust application of the passive traction control and actually engages brakes harder than the passive systems. And you really would not want a hard braking at speeds over five miles an hour. Okay, next item, dead stop. So a track is a system that is really designed to be used when you have come to a complete stop and you need to accelerate or start on a slippery surface or a surface where you simply have no traction. The Toyota literature on a track typically discusses it in the context of starting when you're on a slippery surface or accelerating from a slippery surface. And it really comes into its own in that application. Now that's not to say that it doesn't work when you're driving. As we just discussed, it, it will work up to about five miles an hour. But typically, once you're in motion, multi-terrain select is the better application. Okay, so pick a track when you're accelerating from a dead stop. Remember that it does require you to, to actually accelerate to put power through the system and remember that it only works in four low at very low speeds. All right, let's switch over and start talking about multi-terrain select, which really is a very different system. But, but first, let me explain. As you can see, we did a lot of the A-Track video in a designated OHV area, which was pretty much a gravel pit, uh, but some fun little obstacles in there. From there, we hit the trails and did some hill climbs. This is all near Bend, Oregon, and, and I'll show some of that footage now as we talk about multi-terrain select. Now, multi-terrain select really is a very different system than A-Track. Remember that A-Track seeks to eliminate all wheel spin by applying brakes to, to the spinning tire. Now, multi-terrain select, 
does something a little different. It actually allows wheel spin. It simply tries to regulate the amount of wheel spin and it does it differently than what A-Track does. A-Track only uses brake pressure. Multi-Terrain Select uses brake pressure as well, but in addition, it regulates wheel spin by adjusting throttle performance. So that's important. Understand that you're giving up some of your throttle control the minute you switch into Multi-Terrain Select. Now here's how Multi-Terrain Select works. You can select between four different terrain types. Mud and sand, loose rock, mogul, and rock. So the first setting, mud and sand, allows for the most wheel spin. And as you move through the settings, when you get to rock, rock allows virtually no wheel spin. So you can see that there's some definite overlap with A-Track. But as we discussed, A-Track comes into its own when you're starting from a dead stop and multi-terrain select is really the, the traction control system that is best suited for active driving. Now bear in mind this will be at relatively low speeds. As previously mentioned, while you can activate all MTS features while in four-wheel drive low, if you exceed a speed of seven miles an hour, your MTS features will not activate. So the next thing about MTS is a significant distinction from A-Track and it also is something that really underscores why MTS is the traction control system of choice for active driving. And that is that MTS works in both four-wheel low and four-wheel high. Now to clarify, all the MTS features work in four-wheel low. That means mud and sand, loose rock, mogul, and rock. They all work in four-wheel low. In four-wheel high, only one of them works, and that's the mud and sand feature. Mud and sand also happens to be the one that allows for the most wheel spin, and I think it's pretty intuitive that in mud and sand terrain, a little bit of wheel spin actually helps. So that's really the basics of the two systems, and they really are situational. So for example, in my vehicle, the multi-terrain select and A-Track work, and I've got the factory installed E-Locker on the back axle. In addition, I have the ARB Air Locker on the front axle. And all these systems overlap one another in some regards. But even though that's the case, in some situations, the first and most obvious pick may not always work. For example, when we were doing the A-Track demonstrations, in a couple of situations, we tried to power up a hill using A-Track, and just because of how the vehicle was positioned and how uh, it was sort of pinned against a rock and needed to go not just forward but up over that rock, the vehicle, as we applied acceleration, just started to buck, and it did it enough that we were concerned about potentially breaking a CV axle. So in that situation, I just flipped on the front and rear locker and went over it like butter. Well, that's it, guys. It's all good fun. Thanks for watching.